The number one question I get on our YouTube channel is asking for recommendations for which all-inclusive resort is the best and which one they should choose. And I totally get it because there are so many to choose from, it can be completely overwhelming that sometimes you don't even know where to start. So in this video, I show you the exact process that I use when I'm trying to narrow down which all-inclusive resort I'm gonna choose for my next vacation. And it's actually a video I posted over a year ago, but it's the exact same process that I still use today to book every single vacation that we go on. But I'm reposting it because I know it's a foolproof method that will help you choose the best all-inclusive resort for you and your family. So first, let's talk travel agents, and I wholeheartedly believe in travel agents. In fact, I probably should have been a travel agent because I do love the process of researching the all-inclusive resort so much, but it takes a lot of time. So by using a travel agent, you can really save a lot of time. So if you're traveling somewhere for the first time, usually the travel agent has been there, can really give you all the tips and tricks that you need to know to have a stress-free vacation and sometimes can get you some pretty good discounts. And I used a travel agent when I traveled for the first time, but now I prefer to book everything on my own. One, because I just truly love the process of the research. Also, I like to be in control of the reservation. If there is an issue, I can handle it and resolve it directly. And then sometimes travel agents are swayed by large commissions from different resorts. So they might guide you towards one resort over the other based on that. So let's get into it. You are going to love this video, even though it's a little bit older with the audio and editing, there's so much amazing information in there. You will never pick the wrong resort again. So let's get started. And really it all comes down to planning and research. And again, if you don't wanna take the time to do that, maybe then that's where a travel agent can really come in and help you. But I, again, love the process, enjoy taking the time to do that. So down in the description below, I've given you two sheets that you can download, which is the travel planner and the resort comparison sheet. And this is gonna help you keep organized because there's a ton of different resorts out there. When I was first starting to do this, I had papers all over and I lost track of what had what. So the first is the travel planner. So obviously the travel planner is gonna help you break down all the logistics, put it on paper of what you're looking for in your vacation. But more importantly, what it's going to do, it's going to help you avoid some major, major pitfalls that people commonly make when they are booking their vacation. And the first thing is the dates of travel. So what people don't think about when they're planning their dates is a few things. The first is obviously holiday season. If you're traveling during Christmas, different holidays, not only are the rates going to be a lot higher, but everything's going to be more crowded. There are airports, trying to get an Uber, everything. So it becomes a lot more complicated and it could be more stressful as well. Hurricane season is another thing I see all the time because the rates are really, really low. So people are tempted to vacation during that time, but then you always run the risk, obviously, of getting stuck there with a hurricane. I would never do a destination wedding during hurricane season in the Caribbean or anything like that because it just is too stressful. And then spring break also, I see in reviews all the time where people were surprised about the rowdiness of the college students and spring breakers. So you wanna make sure that the resort you're going to is not a spring break destination. And then finally, I think weather in general, you cannot control it, obviously. I think every Caribbean vacation I've been on, we've had rain of some sort, but there are certain times of the year where it is drier. So the dates are really, really important when you are planning. So the next thing is the number of people. And if you are traveling with a very large group, then definitely contact the resort number one because you can get really good discounts, but maybe consider getting a travel agent because you don't want to be responsible for everyone's travel. That could turn into a complete nightmare. But when you're considering the number of people, you also have to consider the number of rooms because that's also going to change the um, the budget. So if you are traveling with teenagers, you know sometimes they want their own room, and it's going to make your vacation that much more enjoyable too. Trust me. So spend the extra money, get a couple extra rooms if you need to, because it's definitely worth it. Now, budget is next, and that's definitely a tricky subject because everybody has a different mindset when it comes to budget. But remember, you are vacationing, so try to stretch your budget just a little bit more than you maybe would because who knows when you're going to get to do this again, and you're making memories with your family, and you want to have the best experience possible. And so when you're setting your budget, 
I usually for three nights am able to get a really nice resort that's room, food, everything included for about $700 to $1,000 per person um, per um, for the entire three nights. And that does not usually include airfare. But again, when you think about it, think about all the money that you spend, how much it costs to go out to dinner. So some of these rates are really, really amazing considering everything that you're getting. If you haven't decided exactly where you're going to go yet, then in this area of possible destinations, put maybe three to five different places that you are thinking about. So in terms of all-inclusive resorts, really the best places are Cancun, Riviera Maya, Punta Cana, um, Jamaica. I haven't been there yet, but I see a lot of people go to Jamaica. So it's going to help later in the search, and we're going to be able to really narrow that down for you. But now the really, really important part, and that's your top five priorities in order of importance of what it is you want when you're looking for a vacation. So if it's just me and a friend, the beach is the biggest priority. I want an oceanfront view and I want a beach. I want a coffee shop with buffet options. I want top shelf liquors. I pretty much know the things that I want. But if I'm traveling with my children, it's different. They don't care as much about the beach. They really care about the activities, the rooms, and also the pools. And this list is really, really important because it's going to help you narrow down all of the choices. Let me tell you, there are a ton of choices, and that's why this process is really important because it's going to help narrow down what resort really hits all those priorities. And then below, you're going to do the additional notes and wish list to go um, narrow it down further. So for instance, I like a juicy tub. I like to have a bar inside the room. I do like a butler things like that. So you can put some additional items on your wish list. So if there are some tiebreakers, you can go back to this and really help you make your decision. So now that you have the planning sheet all filled out, now it's time to start looking for those resorts. Now I always start with Google, our friend Google, that's the best place. And I'm going to type in best all-inclusive resorts for families in Cancun best all-inclusive resorts for families in Punta Cana. Again, on that sheet, you're deciding which destination you wanna to go to, or maybe you're not sure, so you're comparing resorts at different destinations. So you're putting that in there and you're gonna see a bunch of different resort options come up, or articles, things like that. So a list does populate. I always stay away from the top ones because those are ads and people are paying for those top spots. So I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna start looking for maybe some reputable articles that I know or names. I'm gonna stay away from any type of things that might be biased, for instance, the resort itself. Here is um, a vacation uh, family guide. So I clicked on that and you'll see they just start listing a bunch of different resorts. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing them down unless there's something that pops out to me right away that I know I'm not interested in. For instance, like Hard Rock, I would never go to a Hard Rock internationally. So that's, a, that's not one that I'm going to write down, but I'm going to write down all the different ones. I'm not going to pay attention to any of the details right now. And again, because I'm just trying to get some names right now. And then later we're going to start compare, start diving deeper into some of the things that the resorts have, the prices, et cetera, and see if it matches with what we're looking for. And I will keep doing this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look through as many as I can see. And I'm going to start looking for repeat resorts. So resorts that are on these lists three, four, five times. So when I'm seeing things like the Moon Palace, this one, the Fiesta Americana, that's been on there a couple of times. I'm going to write, you know, maybe star that one, um, a Barrow Star, things like that. You're going to see some pretty popular names um, come up over and over again as you go through these articles. Again, I stay away from things like TripAdvisor because they do have a certain algorithm. I'm trying to really um, stick with things that might not be biased. Again, blogs, articles, uh, you know, that you might see in Vacation Mag. And then I'm going to switch up the Google search as well. I'm going to add maybe Riviera Maya. I'm going to put the date 2022 to see what the most recent trends are. Or maybe it's very important for you to have a brand new resort. So you could even put that in the search bar. Brand new resorts in Cancun for families. Brand new resort resorts in Putacana for families and see what comes up. 
Maybe it's important for you um, to have a villa or two or three bedrooms, which is kind of difficult to find at times for all-inclusive resorts. So you can type that in, all-inclusive resorts with three bedrooms, and you're going to continue to start finding this list of 10 to 15 resorts, if possible, that you're going to go ahead and put and write down on the resort comparison sheet. One source I really like is Oyster because they also list about the prices, um, what the average price is. So that can eliminate, for instance, this one right here. I see this all the time, but I'm not going to be paying thousands and thousands of dollars per night, at least on this trip. So that one I know I'm not going to write down. At least it gives you an idea as well so that you're not wasting your time on these really, really out of your budget resorts, but also maybe showing you some that are really, really cheap. And maybe that's a red flag. So that's one thing I like about Oyster as well as they do give you that. TripAdvisor will give you that as well. But again, there is a little bit of algorithm there. And I feel like it's not as unbiased as some of the other ones. So once you've kind of scrolled through, and I would say maybe have a list of 10 or 15, and it's not your final list because you might be finding some more along the way, then you could start really diving into the different resorts and hopefully narrowing it down some. Now, you may want to completely skip this step. You may think that this is way too much work. You do not want to start from zero. There's too many resorts out there, and that I completely understand. I actually like the process. I want to know all the different resorts. I want to do the comparisons myself. So if you want to eliminate this step, you could, again, go to a travel agent. That's one way to do it. You could also ask for recommendations from friends and family. And then later, I'm going to show you how you can go to your Facebook group and ask for recommendations, not only in specific resorts, but just in general. Say, hey, I'm going to Cancun. I'm going to Riviera Maya, looking for the best all-inclusive family resort. And you can get some names that way as well. So we've gone to Google, we've compiled a list of 10 or 15 resorts, maybe, that we can start narrowing down based on the trip planning sheet. Um, and your priorities. So the next place I go is, you guessed it, TripAdvisor. And I think almost everybody goes here and knows that step, but there's a few things you might not be doing while you're on TripAdvisor that are gonna be really, really, really helpful and possibly show you some red flags about the resort. So the very first thing that I actually do is I look at the number of stars. And if it's anything less than a 4.5, I'm going to be crossing it off the list. And that's based on experience. I've been to three or four all-inclusive resorts that are four stars, and the food is not good, the, um, the drinks are not good, and overall, it's just not a good experience. So I have just learned that from my experience. I just take it right off the list. The next thing I go to is the pricing. And one th thing that's great about TripAdvisor is they put the pricing right on that front page as well. And you can enter in the exact dates and the number of people that are traveling. And they're going to show you a good range of what it is per night. So now you know if it's in your budget or not, which of course is usually very helpful as well. And I've, from my experience, a really good 4.5 or five star resort, you're going to be paying about $700 to $900 on average per night for, for two people. Sometimes it can be a little bit more. Sometimes you could get like a good deal um, and get a little bit less, but usually that's the average. So the resort is five stars. It's within our budget. And so now I'm going to see how far it is from the airport. And that's one huge priority for me. And one that I did not think about when I first started traveling, especially since I'm usually going for three days and trace noches, I don't want to be hours from the airport. So right on the location page right here, another great thing about TripAdvisor is they show you exactly how far it is from the airport that you're flying into usually. So I'm going to take that into consideration as well. And again, I'm putting this all on my resort comparison sheet. So as I'm going through all the resorts, I can keep track of what is what. So finally, now it's time to read the actual reviews. And I will go down to the review section. You want to make sure that you're reading the most recent review. So TripAdvisor will show you the most recent. And that's because resorts can change from year to year. So there's people that have had great, amazing experiences maybe a year ago, but now the resort is not doing so well. So it's important that you do read the most recent reviews. 
And I'll read probably about 10 of them, maybe 10 to 15. And if someone does give them not a great review, I want to read it and see what the particular issue is, because sometimes they are rating it on a very particular issue. Maybe it was one server, maybe it was one restaurant, or the fact that they didn't like that there was a timeshare pitch and things like that. So you can kind of weed some things out and maybe it doesn't pertain to you, or maybe it's something that does really bother you as well. So you really want to read them and know that everybody does have a different experience Um, and they expect different experiences. So you want to take that into consideration when you're reading the reviews. Then the next thing I'm going to go do is I'm going to start actually searching the reviews based on the priorities that I want from the resort. So for instance, if the beach is a priority, I'm going to go in to the title, into the search bar of the reviews, as you can see right here, and I'm going to type in the word beach. And when you type that in, they will highlight that word in the different reviews. And so you can kind of get an idea, um, read what the beach was like when you with that resort. And people will say, oh, the beach is beautiful. Sometimes they'll say the beach was terrible, um, which was the case here with the Moon Palace. Um, but, you know, you can really get a, a better idea. Not always. Sometimes it'll just say, you know, the word will come up and it won't pertain to what you're looking for. So after I've gone through about 10 or 15, trying to find out you know, what the beach is like, if I still am not completely sure, I'm gonna go up to the pictures. And then I'm going to find the traveling pictures, the, tra- the pictures from travelers. And I'm gonna go find um, the most recent. So you're gonna filter them by recency. And you're gonna look at the pictures of the beach. And then you're gonna be able to see if it's clean, if it's nice, you know what the conditions are. And you can do that over and over again with the different priorities that you have on your planning sheet. So you can do that with the pools. You could type in um, service. You could type in cocktails, food, um, anything and everything that you can think of, you could type into that search bar. And now you're going to repeat the process with the different resorts on your resort comparison sheet. And really, it seems like a lot of work, but it shouldn't take too long. So this is Generations. It has a four and a half stars. The other thing I look at is the number of reviews. So this has like 4,000 reviews. It's still getting four and a half stars. So that's great. It's well within the budget. We're going to go down and look at the location, see how far it is from the airport. Great. It's not too far from the airport. So now I'm going to start reading those reviews. And so as you can see, it just takes minutes to kind of look through all of that. And now I'm going to just start kind of you know, skimming the reviews. And a lot of them are five stars, the most recent ones, which is great. So it, I'm reading through them and everyone is having a really great experience. So it's, it, I'm getting excited because this is um, a potential resort that maybe I want to go to. And now again, I'm going to start going into that search bar and based on the priorities that are listed on my planning sheet, I'm going to start looking. So obviously the beach is one that I always talk about. And This one was a little bit harder to find things about the beach because when I searched it, it just was saying like beach service, the server at the beach. Um, You know, I had a lot of things with beach, which was a good sign. That means people were spending a lot of time at the beach. But then when I finally found something is that the beach was nice, but it was really narrow. So that's when I started to go back to the pictures. And I really want to take a look at the beach and see if it's something um, that I would enjoy. Another search term that I use a lot when I'm traveling with my kids is teens or teenagers, teenager, those types of things. Because one thing that resorts fall short on sometimes is entertaining those teenagers, even though they can be hard to entertain at times. And so I want to see other families that brought teens, what they thought. And so you can see when I search it in, it's kind of back and forth. So there were some teenagers that did not have fun. Some teens Um, liked it, but it looks like overall they didn't have a lot to do for teenagers. So I'm going to note that on my resort comparison sheet so that when I'm making my final decision, that might come into play. So I usually stay on TripAdvisor and complete the process for all of the resorts I have listed on the sheet because you may think it's going to take a while, but you can eliminate a good three to four resorts pretty quickly just by checking the stars 
checking the price per night and how close it is to the airport. And also just by going through some of your priorities, you may have already crossed some of those off. So after I've got maybe my two, three top ones, the next thing I actually do, which is not even listed here as one of the steps, is I go to the actual website of the resort to check out the room types that they have. Because for me, it's really important that there's an oceanfront room option. And believe it or not, a lot of resorts don't have always an oceanfront room option. So I wanna see, first of all, if that's an option and what other room types that they have. So Generations was one that I was really excited about. I was excited about the five-star reviews. Everyone was really happy with the beach overall, the service, the food, and everything. So now I wanna see what kind of rooms that they have. And when I went to the website, I was really, really blown away by the options that they had. They had swim up oceanfront, and they had multiple bedrooms, which is very, very unusual for family resorts and very sought after. So that was one thing that really surprised me and kind of excited um, me about this resort. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start looking through the pictures that they have on the website, knowing that it's the resort that's showing them, so they're gonna look good. But I wanna see what the layout is, you know, what the different bed options are, those types of things. And then the other great thing about the website itself is that you can also look at the prices and they usually have this calendar option. So for instance, those three bedrooms are probably pretty tough to get, but they're gonna show you exactly when they're available. So maybe you're gonna change your dates based on these rooms. And you're gonna note that in your sheet as well. So that's one thing I really love about the resort websites. So you've probably narrowed it down to your top three or five resorts. So now, of course, we're gonna to go to YouTube, um, which is one of the reasons why I started this channel is because when I went to YouTube, a lot of the videos fell short on what I was looking for. But nonetheless, we're gonna to go to YouTube and see if we can find any. And I'm gonna put in the name of the resort, and I'm actually gonna put the word review after it. So that video has come up, um, they might be reviews. But when they come up, I'm looking, there's a lot of old ones, like seven years, that's too long. We want something more recent because resorts can change. So what you can do is you can go up to the top and in the filter section up here, you can change the upload date. And so I'm going to change that to this month and see if there are any new videos on this resort. And again, it doesn't look like there really is a lot. There's this one from a travel agent which again, I try to stay away from because they're usually trying to sell you something, although they can give you really good tours and room um, tour videos too. But again, there's not a lot here, which is indicating to me, maybe this is a place that three days and Tres Noches needs to go do a review on. Um, but I've just not seen anything come up. So I'm gonna go back up to the filter and I'm gonna change the upload date to this year. And hopefully we'll get some good videos that way. And here are some. Now this one from This Blonde Life is one that I'm gonna check out because it's probably like a vlog, hopefully a little unbiased. It's gonna give us you know, some really good tips maybe as we go through the video. So what are some things that you should look for when you're watching videos? So one of the biggest things that I have picked up from videos is the layout of the resort. That's one big thing, um, how big the resort is. Also though, a big thing is the cleanliness of the resort and how new it is. Is it old? Can you see wear and tear as you're looking around? Also the beach, the beach is a big one. So you can get a really live view of what the beach conditions look like, what the seating looks like, how much seating there is, things like that. The other thing too is the vibe of the resort. I feel like I can really pick up the vibe from watching videos. And this one right here, there's nobody, there's absolutely nobody in the video. So that means two things. One is she probably got up really early to film the uh, the resort. And I get that too, because you know when you're filming these things, not everybody wants to be filmed, but usually people don't mind because you're just walking by them. And so for me, that's why I like to film when there's people there, because I wanna see the resort in action. You know, what does it look like? Are people happy? Are people having fun? You really wanna catch that vibe. So then I'll go down here to the comments, and this is one reason why I love the comments when you guys comment on my videos, because you really add so much. Or you ask questions that I wouldn't have thought of, and maybe in the next video I'm gonna add that, but here someone even said, hey, why is there no people there? 
you know, and she explained that she got up early, but she also said it is, it was really quiet. There was not as many people as they thought would be. So that's something I'm going to read through because I kind of like a lively resort. I want people there. And so those are the types of things you're going to kind of look for when you're going through the video. Now here's another one I decided to take a look at um, because it looked like maybe it was going to give some good information. So I clicked on this one and really it was just a lot of talking. Um, also, I noticed too that there was a little bit of a sales pitch there. And again, I don't, that doesn't bother me because I'm just looking to see what the resort looks like. But what I'm looking for is real information. Again, this is a good, um, I'm glad I'm doing this because it looks like three days and Trace Notches needs to go to this resort and really bring you guys a really good review. So I'm going to skip through this one. Um, but again, sometimes you can go into those comments and get some good information that way as, as well. Um, but I'm going to go back and I want to search now, just see what other videos look like might give me some good information. And the room tours are big. That's why I always do a room tour when I'm at a resort because they, you want to see the layout of the room. You want to see how updated it is. You want to see how clean it is. You want to see um, what's included in the room because it's important, especially if you're traveling with kids and families and things like that. Usually kids, you know, especially now, they want a nice room. So I went back to this blonde life and um, went through the, the room tour and again, went to the comments section and there were some really good questions asked and she responds as well. So you can get a lot of good information that way. I'm going to keep looking for as many videos as I can find. So I'm actually going to go back to that filter. I'm going to take off um, the upload date and just maybe watch even some older videos just so I can really get a feel for any information and read those comments. Now, if you're having trouble finding videos on your resorts, it could mean a couple of things. One is that it's just not that popular of a resort, and that's not always a bad thing, um, but sometimes it is. So if you're having trouble finding videos, you want to do as much research as you can. And then I'm going to repeat the process with the next um, resorts on my list. And I know this seems like a lot, but I'm telling you it's worth it because you're spending a lot of money going on this family vacation. So you want to make sure that you have looked into everything that you can. And there is the three days in Trace Noches video. So um, I'm so happy that you guys are finding these videos useful. Now you can get really specific in that YouTube search bar as well based on the providers that you're looking for. So you could put in here like Moon Palace Cancun Rooms and you're going to see a bunch of videos come up. You can go through those. If you want to put in something like the Moon Palace Cancun activities, you know, you can do that. Whatever is on your priority list that's really important to you, you can type in that YouTube search bar as well and see if there's any videos specific to that. Now, the Moon Palace is going to have a ton, a ton of videos because it's really popular. It's one of the most popular all-inclusive family resorts out there. So it can even get overwhelming when there's too many videos. But again, just go up to that filter and just do it by upload date and narrow it down to just a, a few videos to watch. Now, as the final step, sometimes I'll go one last place, and that's Facebook, and that's going to be on the town pages. And I alluded to it earlier, you could go here first and actually just ask for a blanket re recommendation. So that is definitely something if you want to get just some names of resorts. The only thing with that is that everyone has different priorities when they're going on vacation. That's one reason why I did, don't do that anymore because you just get overwhelmed with all different suggestions and you don't know where to start. The other thing is you can go into the search bar and actually search up the resort that you're looking for and put that in the search bar and see what comes up. When I put it in here, not too much really came up, but sometimes some other things will come up like recommendations for all-inclusive resorts and you can start looking through the comments there. And now it's time for the exciting part. It's time to book that vacation. And maybe right now, this is the time you're gonna go contact your travel agent. But the first thing that I usually start with is United Vacations. And a lot of the airlines have their own vacation packages now. And sometimes I, I even do this step one all the way at the beginning to get a list of resorts to start researching because lots of times, especially big airlines, they can have really good deals with certain resorts. So I'm going to put in the dates of travel, obviously where I'm going. And uh, for Cancun, I always choose Cancun and Riviera Maya. So they show me all the different resorts in the area. 
Now for the dates of travel, I actually put that we were leaving on Easter Sunday because later I want to show you just by switching it up a week here and there, you can save a lot of money. So the prices that we're going to get are going to be at the very, very high end because it's holiday travel. And here you can see it generates a list of a lot of different resorts and it includes the flight. So the initial price that you're looking at, it usually ends up going, going up a couple hundred dollars per person um, when you start adding on taxes and fees and different things. But the price listed is per person and I'm just kind of looking through all the different resorts. So they have a lot of different options, which is great. And you can even filter it over here. You can put as, I always usually filter it to see which one has the best ratings, the best class, because I want to see what type of resorts they're offering on that end as well. And now you will see there is actually a place here where you can type in the resort name that you're specifically looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in actually generations since that's been the example I've been using. And again, maybe I need to go there to do a review. And yes, it comes up, which is great. It is on the higher end. So again, this is for three nights because I'm usually traveling for three days and trace noches. Now, if you just stay a few more nights for five nights, it's not gonna be that much more. So if you have the ability to do that, sometimes it's great to stay in another couple nights the airfare is going to be the same and it just goes up a couple hundred dollars a night. And here you're going to see they list all the different options for the rooms and it can go up quite a bit per person based on the room alone that you pick. And I'm just going to pick a, a you know, a simple ocean front room. And then the next thing it's going to ask me to do is pick the flights. And I always want nonstop because I'm traveling for, th for three days and trace noches. I don't have a lot of time. So I'm gonna see what the nonstop options are. And you can see the price is going up a little bit because um, you know we're, we're starting to add on some premium things there to the package. And then on the way home, I also want nonstop. And so, uh, and usually for the flights, I pick um, on the way home, I don't pick the latest flight just in case it were to get canceled. So I usually pick the next latest. And that way, at least there's an option if, if something were to happen. So that's a little tip there for you. And now you can see it's gone up about three to $400 per person just by going through the process. So now they're showing you the prices for two people. And remember, they're high because I put in a holiday, put in Easter. So you're going to have probably one of the highest prices out there for traveling. And um, I'm gonna go through, I'm not gonna add anything onto the vacation package through this website. I did it one time for transportation before I had Nacho, it was a nightmare. But one, another advantage that United Vacations offers is this monthly payment. So you can qualify for monthly payments as well if you're booking far, not, far enough out in advance, which is great, because it's a great way to afford a vacation if you don't wanna pay for it up front. The travel protection um, is up to you. I've never gotten it. Some people really swear by it. And it's not a bad idea, this, especially in this climate that we're traveling in. And now they're just going to ask you to go through the process. Now, one thing with United Vacations is that if you have any issues, it can be a little bit of a nightmare trying to like change a flight, talk to the resort, and things like that. So now I've kind of gone to booking them separately. And I'll book my flight, and then I'll go here to Hotels.com and see what the rates are that they offer. And you can put the name of the resort in directly and the dates, um, and you can earn rewards. That's why I started with this. I actually have their credit card as well, and I'm not an affiliate, so I'm not getting anything from this, but I've earned a lot of free nights by booking through them. So I will always check what the rates are that they're offering for the resort. And th sometimes too, they do not require upfront payment. Sometimes you can pay it at the resort. And sometimes they do offer VIP perks um, just by being a Hotels.com member. So there are certain advantages to both. But lately I have been using Hotels.com. Their rates are really great. They're easy to deal with. And then if I have any changes I have to make with my flight, it's a lot easier. And if there's an issue with the resort, it's a lot easier. So here you'll see it comes up. They do have some options with the rooms. Um, some of the, a lot of the rooms are sold out. So one thing is sometimes they don't always have a lot of inventory because they tend to offer the lower rates. So that's one thing to think about as well. One thing I love about it though, if you click on the calendar, it's gonna show you 
how the rates drop from week to week. So you can even pick dates based on that. So you'll see just a week later when it's not a holiday, the rates do go down um, about $100 a person. And um, this, though, they didn't have the, the same room that week. So, But it's a great way at least to compare and really try to see where you can get the best rate. And so the next place I will go is the website itself for the resort, and I will check their rates as well. And I have found, just from my experience, they're usually not as good as Hotels.com or United Vacations, but I'm going to check anyway just to make sure because sometimes they do have promotions. And there are advantages of booking through the website because the resort prefers that, and you can make changes and upgrades a little bit easier. So that's something to think about. So I'm going to put the dates of travel. Again, I'm going to use that holiday date because then we're going to do a comparison and go through and see you know, what rooms they have to offer, what the rates are. And again, it does not include flights, um, unlike the United Vacations one. So it's something to think about as well that it's not going to include the flights. So let's see what the rates are for on the website. And this is, you'll see it actually, that's for the entire three nights. It shows it right there. It's $1,400 for two people. So if we added flights onto that, which would probably be around $400 per person, um, you're at about the same price that United Vacations was offering with the flights. And now I'll go back, I'll change the dates. So let's see if by going that week later that we talked about the, after the holiday, how much cheaper it could be. And if, and if you have flexibility, maybe you want to change the dates of travel just so that you can get a better rate. So it's a few hundred dollars less. It's not that much less for the following week. And the website itself is really a good source of information as well to get details about the resort. So earlier when we were looking at the rooms, I'll also take the opportunity to review all the different things that the resorts have to offer and some details. For instance, this is kind of neat. It tells you the depth of the swimming pools. That's something in resorts that a lot of people complain about. Their pools are not that deep, but they do that for a reason. So there's no drownings and things like that, but they actually show you that information. Um, you can look at the amenities. Here are the restaurants and bars. You can look at all the different restaurants and the types of restaurants that they have, how many bars they have. Sometimes they're going to tell you what kind of liquor that they serve. So I also spend a lot of time on the website itself early in the process just to really get um, an idea of all the different things that come with the all-inclusive package and also what things are not included in the all-inclusive package. You want to make sure that you have that information as well because I have seen where people think it's all-inclusive and then they get to the resort and they actually have to pay for dinner or they have to pay for certain um, alcohols and things like that. It hasn't happened to me, but I have heard of other people having that experience. So you want to go through the website as well early in the process just to really see everything. So in this instance, if I'm going to choose generations, I would probably book through Hotels.com and then book my flight separately through United. Also, finding a booking option like Hotels.com that actually gives you rewards for booking, or maybe it's a credit card, is also a great way to earn free travel when you're booking. Some final tips for the booking process. One is when you're choosing flights. Again, I know I mentioned it. Make sure you're choosing when you're departing. I usually choose one of the earliest flights in case it gets delayed or canceled. You have other flights to choose from. And on the way back, I don't choose the latest flight. I choose the next latest for the same reason. And if you do have some final questions, call the resort itself. And it's a great way as well to see what kind of service they provide. I've had um, scenarios where I call and no one even answers. And I'm thinking this is a red flag because if they can't even answer their call center and get that right. What is it like at the resort itself? So I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanted to repost it in hopes that more people would see it and avoid the same mistakes that I have made when booking all-inclusive resorts. As you can see, there's so many pitfalls that you can get into. In fact, that's why I started this channel, so I could help as many people as I can by providing honest reviews, 
real information and tips so that you can have the best vacation possible. I do respond to all comments and questions, so please like and subscribe and keep following us. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. We even started our own Facebook group, which I will put the link in the description below. And it will include other ways you can support the channel to keep the channel growing, and you know we appreciate it, is by using our affiliate links, shopping from our Amazon storefront or our merchandise line, or even sending us supers on YouTube.